Hey guys, it's Simmy, and this is Pro Wrestling Unlimited. So every year, Pro Wrestling Illustrated puts out their PWI 500. It is a list of the top 500 male wrestlers in the entire world, not just in North America, not just in WWE, not just in AEW, not just, you know, in anywhere specific, but the entire world, the entire landscape of pro wrestling. And today, they have revealed who has made the top 10. Now, the full list will be coming out this November, December time, but we can tell you who made the top 10. So let's kick it off with talking about number 10. Number 10 goes to Jonathan Gresham. Over the last year, Jonathan Gresham was, I guess you could say, the final Ring of Honor champion under the old regime before Tony Khan took over. Yes, he's no longer the Ring of Honor champion, but... He was over the last year and had a great run in the indies, not only just in matches, but also starting the Terminance company that has been a great asset to the independent pro wrestling world here in America. Number nine. Number nine goes to Big E. Over the last year, Big E, well, he became the WWE champion for the very first time. He is out right now injured, but regardless of that, the last year may have been one of the best of Big E's career as he went out and had great matches as WWE champion and so forth with guys like Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and others. Number eight. Number eight goes to Ohio, Del Fakingo. Fakingo is the current AAA mega champion and, well, regarded to some as the best wrestler right now in all of Mexico. We have seen Vikingo wrestle just everybody and anybody that comes through Mexico having banger after banger after banger after banger. Number seven. Number seven goes to Brian Danielson. Now, what really is there to say about Brian Danielson over the last year? His first year in All Elite Wrestling was amazing, going out there and having match of the year after match of the year after match of the year contender most notably with guys like Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. Brian Danielson, again, like I said, what is there to say that hasn't already been said about his first year in All Elite Wrestling that isn't just a, another glowing endorsement? Number six. Number six goes to Cody Rhodes. Now, Rhodes, before getting injured, had a very, very strong year. He was the TNT champion in AEW, and then his final AEW match was regarded as one of the best AEW matches of the year. That latter match was Sammy Guevara. Yet, Rhodes will be remembered over the last year for his big return to WWE, his strong trilogy with Seth Rollins and tearing his peck. Yet, 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 tearing his peck, even though it's a bad thing, can also be looked at as a good thing as many say that it actually made the Hell in a Cell match better than they were expecting. Him going in there injured, working injured, and the intensity that that led to. Number five. Number five goes to Bobby Lashley. Over the last year, Lashley actually held the WWE Championship on two different occasions. Lashley is now the current WWE United States Champion, and with the situation of the WWE title on Roman Reigns and all of that, that actually makes Lashley the top guy on Raw with the top title. Number four. Number four goes to Adam Page. Hangman Adam Page had a standout year this past year, winning the AEW World title for the first time in, well, his first world championship. Page would go out over the last year and prove why he deserved to be world champion, putting on great matches with the likes of Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, CM Punk, and others. Number three. Number three goes to CM Punk. Punk, the former PWI number one all the way back in 2012, returned to the world of professional wrestling after taking seven years off. And that, I guess to put it in perspective, is like in 2000 when Garth Brooks said, I'm retiring, I want to be a stay-at-home dad, I want to do everything with my daughters and this and that. And then 14 years later, shocking the world saying, oh, hey, I got new music, and by the way, I'm going on a world tour. In the last year, CM Punk has shown, yeah, I may not be the exact same CM Punk in the ring that I used to be, but that's still not going to stop me from going out and trying to put on the best matches and tell the best stories that I can for all of you. And he did so with the likes of MJF, Eddie Kingston, Hangman Page, and others. 
Number two. Number two goes to Kazuchika Okada. Now, Okada may have not nabbed the top spot just like he did back in 2017, but there's no denying that every year, Okada is one of the top, one of the best, one of the greatest wrestlers there is. And he's probably, if we put a big old thing on it and say who's the best wrestler of the last decade or two, he's one or two. He's number one or number two. Regardless, over the last year, Okada did win the G1 Climax Tournament. You may say, Tim, you won it twice. Technically, yes, but winning it the second time counts for next year. He became the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, and in my opinion, really helped New Japan pull out of the slump that they were in coming out of the pandemic, because, well, the pandemic hit New Japan hard, but Okada as the champion, Okada as their savior, really helped them grow out of that. Number one. Number one goes to Roman Reigns. There's no denying that Roman Reigns has been on a roll, not just the past year, but the past couple of years. But the past year specifically was huge for Roman Reigns, possibly just as big, if not bigger, than the last time Pro Wrestling Illustrated named him number one in 2016. Over the last 12 months, Reigns had great matches with all the top guys in WWE, from the likes of Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre, John Cena, and others as well as the likes of Big E, Montez Ford, and even Bill Goldberg. But I think the one thing that pushed Roman Reigns over to the top is his character work. Is his character work in the storyline of the bloodline. How he has been just amazing as the leader of that group with the Usos and Paul Heyman by his side. But with that, that is the top 10 for the 2022 PWI 500. Now, I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this top 10 list for the last year. Remember, it runs from July 2021 to July 2022. So that is the window, I guess you could say, of what they're looking at. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this top 10 list. Would you keep the top 10 list how it is? Would you keep the guys in the top 10 in the top 10 but shuffle them around? Or do you think somebody else deserves to be in the top 10 over another? But that's going to do it for this episode. Remember to comment below, like, and share this video. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe right here on YouTube.